Hi everyone, thank you for joining me for another Spellbinders 3D vignette featuring Pet House. This is a super cute die set which can be used to create a house for a dog, a cat, or even a bird. All of the sweet designs in the 3D vignette collection are made to lay flat so they're male friendly. The first thing that I did was do all of the die cutting that was required for this project. There are two outline dies for the house. The larger of the two was used to cut dark gray cardstock five times. The smaller die was used to cut light pink cardstock two times. The small die was used in conjunction with the detail die to cut gold foil cardstock to create this pretty filigree overlay. I'll also use just the detail die alone to die cut four of the five dark gray panels. To make sure that this filigree design is going to be aligned from one house to the other, I stack two of the houses together and then die cut them. Only the top house will be die cut through. Second one will have an impression. This makes it very easy to take the die, slide it over top, and you can actually feel it lock into position. Before I run it through the die cutter, I take another one of the houses and align it underneath. And then when I get to the fourth house, I just line up the die with the impressions on that one and die cut it. The solid grey house will be right at the back of the vignette. I'm going to adhere the small pink house to it. The second pink die cut will go on the other side of this panel and that will be where I will die cut the sentiment and there will be room to write a message. This die set comes with both a dog and a cat silhouette image. My card is going to a dog lover, so I use the sentiment, your possum. If this cute card was going to a cat lover, I would change up the sentiment to read your perfect. The gold foil filigree will be adhered to one of the gray houses. It is easy to align one on the other. This will be the first house in the vignette. There are two choices for openings in this house. You can have a circle that would be perfect for a cat house or a bird house, and then the door, which I'm using for my dog house. The door was cut from three of the house layers. To make sure that the door is aligned from one to the other, I use the same method that I use when cutting the filigree. Two houses is stacked, the first one is die cut, the second one leaves an impression, pop the die in place and align the next house underneath it. Next to attach the roof to all of the houses. The first and last house will have a dark pink roof, the rest will be in the grey. When aligning the roof to the house you want to make sure that the slot at the top is not covering the house at all. And you can see I'm making a little bit of an adjustment to make sure that that opening is free and clear. All of the roof lines will need to be aligned to one another. The next house is lined up with this one at the bottom of the die cut. And I'm using a paper clip just to make sure that everything stays in place. And then I go ahead and apply some liquid adhesive to the next roof line pop it in place, getting it aligned to the one underneath it. Then I continue in this manner, aligning one house to the next and using it as the basis to align the roofs. The last house in the vignette has two roofs, a grey one facing inwards and a pink one facing outwards. The mechanism that holds the house in the 3D position and allows it to lay flat consists of three pieces. To start putting this together, we'll use two of them, the two side pieces with the slots. The hooks are trimmed off the houses that are at the front and the back of the vignette. 
the three houses in the middle of the vignette will be attached to the side pieces first by slipping the hook into each slot. Bottom of each hook has a little tiny slit. When the hook is fed through the slot, it's pulled down, locking it into position. It's important that the bottom of the birdhouses are completely flush with one another. So when I get the third house attached, I'm just going to use a paper clip to hold everything in place. On either end of the side piece are score lines which need to be creased. A little bit of adhesive is added to that tab end and then the front of the pet house is aligned to the bottom and attached. After adhesive is applied to the other tab, it is lined up along the side of the last house, making sure that the bottom of all of the houses are flush. Reverse tweezers hold everything in place. Although the side hooks are locked into position, I'm just going to take an added precaution and lift each of the tabs up with my craft pick and put a dot of glue in there. And now for the second side piece. The first thing that I'm going to do is slip each of those hooks into the slots and lock them into position. The first and last house are positioned by lining it up with the crease on either end of the side piece. Adhesive is added to the tab and it is adhered to the back of the first house. Again, a little bit of glue is added onto the tab and then the last house is just picked up and placed on top. The bottom of the houses are flush with one another. I use reverse tweezers to hold everything in place and add a touch of glue behind each tab. And now to add the third piece of the mechanism, this is a spacer bar which is fed through the slots on the top of each of the houses. On either end of the bar are score lines which are creased and those little tabs are adhered to the first and last house. To make sure that the houses stay evenly spaced apart, we're going to add in these little circle die cuts that have a hole in the middle. A little hole on each circle is going to be aligned to a little hole that's on the spacer bar. The craft pick is placed through the hole on the die cut circle. The craft pick is then placed through the hole on the spacer bar. The circle is slid over and pressed into position. Another set of these spacers were placed on the other side of the spacer bar. Because all the houses are now positioned, I was unable to get my fingers in there to press them into position. Tweezers were an extension of my hand and came in handy. I adhered two more pink roof lines on either side of the card, thinking I would need to cover up the spacer bar tab. But in the end, I put a decoration so it didn't matter. The dog silhouette is out of black cardstock. And then I finished him off with a snazzy gold collar. This dog is going to be adhered on the fourth house layer. I did not die cut the door from this one so it would be easier to adhere the dog to it. After the dog is slipped into position, then I use my reverse tweezers to hold it in place until the glue sets. Use two different decorations for the dog house. Both the bone and the paw print come with an outline die and then a detail die. Using both dies for each element, both the bone and the paw print were die cut from light pink cardstock. Seeing just the outline dies, the bone was die cut from the dark gray cardstock and the paw print from gold foil. The bone was adhered above the doorway at the front of the dog house. Before the paw prints are adhered, I'm first going to add in some pretty gold foil scalloped edging on both sides of the card along the edge of the roof. And then the paw prints will be adhered on either side of the card, covering up the slot on the peak of the roof. I love Spellbinder's collection of 3D vignettes. And Pet House is just adorable. The mechanism that allows this card to become three-dimensional is not only ingenious, it is easily put together.
I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, I appreciate your visit.